I wonder what opportunities you've had for education. Did you grow up in a home where it was difficult to be educated? There were very little resources. Maybe you had to leave home early and start work. Or was it different? Did you really have the opportunity to extend your education way beyond school to honors level, a masters, maybe you're even a PhD? Well, there's a man in the Bible called Paul the Apostle. He was a highly educated man, sort of PhD level. And he had this to say in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18 to 19. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, the intelligence of the intel intelligent, I will frustrate. So what changed for Paul? Why did he have this low view of human wisdom in comparison to the cross? Which, of course, is at the center of Easter every year. Well, Paul knew that the straightforward, plain presentation of the gospel always has two effects. Firstly, it's the foolishness to the unsaved, those who are lost, those who do not know Christ yet. And on the other hand, to those who are being saved, those who are coming to know Christ, it is the power of God. <clears throat> So Paul then, in the same passage, introduces um, an Old Testament quote from Isaiah that human wisdom on its own, the striving for human wisdom as an end in itself, is uh, dismissed by God as a means of finding salvation or as a means by finding favor with God. So Paul then, in the same passage, he builds on this thinking by asking a few very pertinent questions questions. Here they are in verse 20. Where's the wise person? Where's the teacher of the law? Where's the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? In other words, Paul is saying, could a wise Greek provide uh, forgiveness for humanity's sin the way the cross did? Or could a Jewish scholar, a wise Jewish scholar, satisfy the wrath of God, the way the cross did. Or the philosopher of this age, which is a man who wants to dispute every issue and then solve it with human reason. Could such a person reconcile humanity with God the way the cross did? And of course, the answer to all those questions is no, no, and no. So I wonder what you've got planned this Easter. And it'll be great to spend time with friends. Maybe you've got time to get away. Maybe just spending time at home, enjoying some time off. Well, all those things are wonderful. But it would also be very wise for us to get into a local church over Easter. And don't worry about the size of the church, how big it is or small it is, or if it's fancy or anything like that. Just get into a church where the plain, straightforward, message of the gospel is preached once again and you can listen and respond to that gospel father we thank you for easter and for everything it means we thank you lord that it is the power of salvation thank you for the cross thank you for taking our sin onto yourself lord jesus satisfying the wrath of god and being resurrected on that sunday and conquering death on our behalf. We love you, Lord. Amen. God bless you and enjoy this Easter.